Madam Chair, distinguished members of the committee and a lot of faces that I've become quite familiar <laughs> with in the past month and a half. Uh, I'm Hendrick Gideons from Brooklyn, Maine. Today, using your own words, I would hold a mirror to the committee's discussions since February. Excuse my oral telegraphy, uh, not telegraphy, uh, yes, oral telegraphy, because this is a very different thing that I'm doing here. Here was the, here's the answer to the question oh, I was okay. hoping for. Why did I do, why did I do what I did? I've been following the weakening of the mining law and regs since spring of 2012. I, uh, during your work sessions, I shared still additional memos with you. Encouraged early on by what you were doing, I watched you ignore Chapman's alternative bill and add insult to injury when you substituted under the number of his bill a tinkered with version of what the legislature last year rejected. I watched the drift of the committee as in my judgment it ignored or overrode science, data, logic, and world experience. I watched uh, when, when yet another hearing was scheduled, I despaired of putting anything together which could make a mark on you. I scoured my notes, I reviewed all of the videotape, 21 plus hours. Slowly it dawned on me that there were telling segments displaying your doubts, worry, puzzlement, and uncertainty. I transcribed them. I structured them into storylines, which is what my testimony was. I asked Eric Tuttle to develop a composite videotape of the segments and post it on YouTube, which is where it is. My written stuff gives you the directions. And I used my 180 seconds pared down from the 240 that I actually wrote to hold the mirror up, appealing to your consciences and your own gut reactions that you should be very afraid about where you seem headed with this. Unusual? Yes. Unprecedented? Perhaps. It's the only thing I could think of that just might conceivably make a difference. What is not sent out to the public for comment is not as likely to receive comments. But what if there's so much sent out that eyes glaze over and the public is worn down by repeated invitations? Can the public really be expected to figure out there's no authority in the framework statute for using insurance to protect the public purse? Yet inexplicably, insurance appears in the draft regulations. Insurance is always cancelable and therefore arguably not a viable tool for financial assurance. Uh, the even letters of credit, uh, irrevocable so-called, are of relatively short duration and they may not necessarily be renewed. In sum, the protection of the public purse is still not assured. All of you must weigh your strong defense of corporate financial responsibility for remediation of adverse events in light of your failure to achieve it yet. The root challenge of metallic mining is environmental risk, yet Chairman Saviello dismisses risk as just a matter of opinion. You can't equivocate. It is your public responsibility to define the risks, to responsibly and knowledgeably estimate their hierarchy, and not just to assure corporate support for transgressions, but to protect the public and the environment against them in the first place. Avoid cosmetic language. Senator Breen expressed surprise at the framing statute's permission for waste discharges to groundwater within the mining area. The response was soothing talk of the original drafting committee's purported concern for water quality. Similarly, the chairman's dismissal of worries uh, over block caving mining technique completely sidestepped the nature of its major risk. After a long and confusing discussion of wet mine waste units, Representative Martin observed, all I can say is it's going to be fun on the floor Someone really ought to tell t sell tickets to that one. It was black humor, yes, but it re refle reflected perfectly his astute sense of the committee's unreadiness, the complexity of what you've had thrust upon you, and the import of the pending decision. It should give the committee serious pause. Finally, every person on the committee knows the processes followed have been compromised from the get-go. Representative Martin, the father of the Administrative Procedures Act, knows this, yet he nonetheless 
seems prepared to go along with even further violations. Representative Tucker has been front and center on these concerns from the start, but so far he has only been duly noted. Such compromised administrative and legislative practices put us, the public, off. You are not close to being done. Vote ought not to pass on what you sent out. I would be pleased to answer any questions you might have. Questions? I do like your tie. 